the Research and Development Service Sector of the Mountain Province State Polytechnic College provides functional and useful research outputs in contributing to the socio-economic development of the community. In the implementation of its research services, the college is guided by the MPSPC Research Manual. This official document bears the policies and guidelines in the conduct of the research. In keeping with the needs of the times, and to align it with the Harmonized National Research and Development Agenda 2017-2022 of President Duterte's administration, the Cordillera Research Development Agenda, and the Heritage Trust of the Chakas Administration, the Research and Development Unit of the Mountain Province State Polytechnic College has revised its research manual in 2018. The highlights of changes in the new manual includes the new organization structure of the RDE. The revised organizational structure includes the following committees. The Research and Extension Council, the Intellectual Property Rights Committee, and the Research Ethics Council. Other revisions include the expanded incentive scheme of the college. All of these are reflected in Chapter 2. The guidelines in the formulation of the MPSPC Research Agenda and Departmental Research Agenda are contained in Chapter 3. Chapter 6 covers the enhanced policy of intellectual property rights. Moreover, a new addition to the manual is the Technology Transfer Protocol which sums up Chapter 7. Stakeholders are actively involved in the formulation of the research agenda. Student representatives from the concerned departments, alumni representatives, faculty and administrators are participants to the research agenda formulation workshops. Considering the work relationship of certain agenda with specific programs, such as the Department of Education with the Teacher Education, the Tri-Bureau of the Philippine National Police, Bureau of Jail Management, Bureau of Fire with the Criminology Department, the Department of Health with the Nursing Department, representatives from these agencies are invited to give their comments and inputs. Involving the stakeholders in research agenda development keeps the research program vibrant and in the long run, gives a sense of collective ownership of the research program with the active involvement of the different stakeholders. As a result of the different research workshops being conducted and through the invitation of external authorities from the field, the different departments of both Bontoc and Tajan campuses were able to craft their research programs and were connected with the agencies they closely worked with. The faculty were able to present in various regional, national, and international fora and were able to publish in reputable journals. The active involvement of the stakeholders, especially the agencies connected with the internship programs of the student in research agenda planning, increases the stakeholders' awareness of the RD program, assures greater research program acceptability and facilitates ease of local resource mobilization when needed. Adequate funding of research program is one of the major factors that sustain a research culture. To ensure that research as part of the mandate of the state universities and college shall be given sufficient budget allocation, the national government appropriates research funds from two budget items, Fund 101 and Fund 164. These budget allocations shall be used solely for the conduct of research and operations of the RDU. Other sources of funds which the research unit draws from are the externally funded research studies. These are approved research programs by funding agencies. At Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, a special fund was coursed to the research unit. The research generation and linkages sector through ERMC Resolution No. 002 Series of 2020, determined that 5% share of its 2019 net income goes to research and another 5% share to extension services. 
This accounts for the 10% share received by the research development and extension sector. The strong support given by management and the unflagging commitment of the RDE managers and researchers paved way for many research programs, projects, and studies to be fully implemented. An increasing trend in the budget utilization shows the progression and maturity of the research unit as it tries to soundly utilize the fund sources coming from internal and external fund sources. For the past years, the research unit has aggressively linked with various institutions and agencies here and abroad. Yearly, supplies and equipment items are procured and used in various projects that augment the properties of the college, thereby enabling the researchers to work productively. Research personnel were also trained in various seminars to further enhance their research competencies. Moreover, in 2018, the administration transferred to a new admin building which provided a more spacious and conducive workspaces for the RDE personnel. An extension field in the RDE is situated at the Baang Demo Farm located in Baupu Mountain Province. Here can be found the Coffee Nursery Project, the Dairy Animal Project, and the Vegetable Legume Root Crops Production Project that uses the patented MPSPC Biocompost Fertilizer. Consequently, adequate funding enabled the Research Development Unit to utilize its major final output performance indicators as required by the oversight agencies. Additionally, the funds secured from external funding have further improved the existing facilities of the college and capacitated further the faculty and research personnel to build on their own research expertise. Observing the scheme of having a counterpart of MPSPC with funding agencies has spread out a fiscal responsibility between MPSPC and the funding agencies that work with the college. Additionally, partaking in the income generation share of the college that subsidized the payment of the job order personnel of the research unit has contributed to the effective delivery of its research mandates. Recognizing the essential role of monitoring research studies, projects, and programs, MPSPC institutionalized its research and extension monitoring tools through ADCO Resolution No. 137 Series of 2015. Likewise, to safeguard the intellectual property rights output of the faculty, especially those born out of research, the research unit is guided by its intellectual property rights that is stipulated in the research manual. To further ensure that the faculty researchers adhere to research ethical practices, the college has its Functional Institutional Research Ethics Committee that scrutinizes the research proposals of the faculty before this are subjected for technical reviews. Under the capable stewardship of the current administration, the research programs and activities of the college have taken a strong impetus. The faculty and staff conduct research studies in line with their respective disciplines. A College Research Council review is conducted for ethical evaluation by the Research Ethics Committee, followed by a technical review by the panel of evaluators. To further entice the faculty to publish in refereed and Scopus Index journals, the management fully implemented the Expanded Incentivization Scheme which gives cash awards to research outputs like copyrights, patents, utility models, and Scopus Index publications. Ever mindful that the strength of the research pillar rests on the competencies of researchers, management provided the different avenues for professional growth such as sending them to training, research presentations, funding publications, conducting research write-shops, workshops, mentoring of experts, and pairing veteran researchers with novice researchers. Moreover, research pairing, collaboration, and mentoring were adopted as a regular practice of the research sector. Along with these opportunities provided to the researchers, 
the RDE encouraged the faculty to transpose their research outputs into policy briefs which were used by LGUs, the institution, and target beneficiaries. Others with commercial value such as research patent on biocompost and incidental research products like coffee seedlings and dairy milk were sold in the locality, proceeds of which were added to the income-generating projects of the college. As a result of the assiduous monitoring and evaluation of the research of the faculty, MPSPC was able to comply with the deliverables that were targeted at the start of the year. Moreover, the physical targets of the Department of Budget were realized for three consecutive years and the research performance of MPSPC contributed to its present SUC Level 3 status. A dynamic collaboration with the community and the provincial government affirms the role of MPSPC as a local research institute and the policies generated from the faculty researchers were adopted by concerned local government units. Going by the dictum, publish or perish, the RDU has clear-cut guidelines on research presentations, publications, and utilizations as supported by its research ethic guidelines, the IPR policy, and the technology transfer protocols. The MPSPC Research Development Framework illustrates the goal of providing a supportive research environment through continuous learning of faculty and staff, streamlined practices, and cross-cutting research initiatives. Management believes that exposure of the faculty through research presentations, either done in campus or off-site, can give them a greater self-confidence and develop from these collegial and scholarly gatherings. Thus, through the conduct of agency in-house review, attendance to research forum, and publication in the MPSPC Research Journal and other reputable journals, the research findings are disseminated and circulated to the academic community and even to target end users. To sustain the research engagement of the faculty, the research sector gives a strong recognition to these productive efforts by fully implementing the research incentives such as giving of cash awards, the loading and giving a certificates of recognition to faculty presenters and awardees. Research productivity of the college is manifested in the growing number of faculty whose papers were published in reputable journals, the increasing citations, the impressive number of copyrights, and the research outputs that were used either for instruction, extension, or production. MPSPC hosted international events such as the Indigenous Studies presentation, and the student research engagement with Parbanas Indonesia. These events mirror the global path of the research directions of the college. As MPSPC is poised to take the greater challenges of the 21st century, it seeks to be a trailblazer of scientific-based local solutions to the community it serves, being true to its vision of ushering in cultural development and inclusive growth. As a service-oriented unit, the Teacher Education Department has remained steadfast in its commitment to bringing the extension programs to its partner schools and communities. Guided by a collaborative extension framework, the Teacher Education Department joins other departments in the college in delivering its services and expertise to the municipality of Sadanga which was chosen for the teacher education extension framework based on important criteria. First, it is a fifth-class municipality. And second, the community demonstrated its willingness and expressed its commitment to become the institution's partners for progress. Since 2014, the teacher education department, through its extension program, has enhancing the development of partner schools towards quality education through relevant extension projects and activities 
has offered trainings and seminars for teachers and students of Sadanga on action research, investigatory projects, instructional materials development, journalism, inclusive education, and teaching strategies for social studies in the 21st century classrooms. So, by signifying their uh, intention or their willingness to be partner, then we did an initial coordination with them, uh, planning with the partner schools, and after that we conducted the training. We were all invited at MPSPC, so all the school heads there and some representatives of the teachers joined us in planning the activities, programs, and uh, uh, projects that would that uh, uh, came out from each school to be uh, implemented in partnership with the uh, with NPSPC. Through this partnership, we expected that this will create more greater impact because uh, the attention, the technical assistance and the service is focused on teachers with small a number of small groups. The school head also believe that uh, the services of MPSPC uh, give we enhance more the teaching strategies of the teachers, especially in the construction of uh, instructional materials. Mm -hmm. yes. Attended the training at your uh, school, we, that's a time that we were able to uh, design our during the uh, Photoshop. That's a plan that we design. We learn how to design our modules, the activity sheets. And yes, I have been thinking on how to meet the needs of the of the learners. But when I joined that training, it is there where I uh, where I learn how to adjust my standard to the learners and how to. Um, and it is there where I think of applying social justice to the, in the classroom. We have learned so many strategies wherein we applied in our teaching in order to address the needs of the children. I was once a school paper advisor and through the trainings that you have conducted, that was way back in 2015, I think, bringing my staff, the children, there at the high school to join the high school law students in the journalism training. And I was uh, so happy and grateful for joining that activity because uh, we were able, even if we are still starting to make or to improve our school paper, we are so happy that we reach uh, the national level uh, uh, press conference and uh, teachers who join the trainings, especially on teaching strategies and the Adobe Photoshop. It was through our observation, they, uh, all, they applied them, the skills and the knowledge that they acquired from those trainings. Makikita mong visible, uh, makikita mo sa kanilang outputs in the classroom teaching and the IMs that they have produced. <laughs> Part of the school heads also, when we have a team supervision, we conduct our team supervision at different uh, schools, we observe that uh, many of the teachers improve their teaching strategies after all the conduct of this uh, training conducted by the MPASPC, especially in uh, making uh, instructional materials, that is they apply the uh, Photoshop and they provide the varied activities in their teaching. Uh, I was able to produce at least two, two uh, actual researches. From the results, we, the, the school head and the teachers, were able to was that, realize how the findings helped us to improve. I think also the outputs of uh, some teachers, especially in uh, Bolwa, uh, 100 percent of the teachers, or eight out of eight teachers, submitted their uh, modules and their themes in the school level, 
in what in the, it was uh, evaluated in the division no? level. So out of uh, 48 na submitted na team, I think 13 were quality assured. And because of these instructional materials, the performance of our learners improved and they met the target of the division uh, that is 85 percent. And uh, another, the school also was uh, awarded as uh, uh, in the district because they, they produced more quality assured learning materials so they, they were awarded as the best performing school. Indeed, the results of the impact assessment conducted with the institution's clientele displays evidence of the skills and knowledge that they acquired through the department's sustainable extension. Area 8 has nine parameters, which present and describe the physical plant and facilities of the college. All of the parameters focus on the campus's system inputs and processes, implementation, and outcomes. At this aspect, the campus has a site development plan and it is implemented as planned and in accordance with the approved zoning ordinances. These site plans are strategically displayed inside the campus, indicating the location of the different buildings, driveways, parking areas, among others. The campus has accessible good roads and pathways that are well maintained, cleaned, and properly landscaped. There is also a system to ensure traffic safety inside and outside the campus. A waste management program is also implemented. Proper utilization, repair and upkeep of the school facilities and equipment, and the cleanliness and orderliness of the campus are evident. Furthermore, the campus has an area for outdoor activities like social, physical, athletic, cultural and military training, to name a few. These are the College Quadrangle, the Eub Ground, the College Auditorium, and the Eub Gymnasium. To ensure the safety of the academic community, there are sufficient security guards to maintain peace and order. The college's security program is in partnership with an agency called Baguio's Finest Security Agency. The maintenance unit also inspects school facilities and equipment regularly for its proper utilization and upkeep. With the strong support of the administration and stakeholders, the campus environment is conducive to all educational activities, can accommodate its present school population and future expansion, and it is safe and well-maintained, well-planned, clean, and properly landscaped. Meanwhile, Parameter B focus on the presentation and description of the campus buildings. The college buildings meet all the requirements of the building code. A certificate of occupancy for each of the buildings is conspicuously displayed. The buildings are constructed according to their uses and are appropriately located to provide for future expansion. Entry and exit points are properly installed with minimum interference to school activities. The buildings have emergency exits and equipped with emergency or fire exits and are readily accessible. In relation, there is a central fire alarm system and readily accessible and functional fire extinguishers and other firefighting equipment. Corridors, doorways, and alleys are well constructed for better mobility and are well ventilated and lighted. On the other hand, the building also provides facilities for persons with disability. There are bulletin boards, display boards, 
waste disposal containers, and other amenities installed and strategically located inside the buildings. Faculty rooms and offices are enough and buildings are ensured. With the joint efforts of all units, the buildings are clean, well-maintained, and free from vandalistic acts. The toilets are clean and well-maintained. Electrical lines are safely installed and periodically checked. Water facilities are functional and well distributed in all buildings. Drinking water periodically undergoes testing and facilities are subjected to pest control and inspection. Furthermore, floor plans indicating fire exits and location of firefighting equipment, standpipes, and other water sources are conspicuously displayed in each building. Smoking is also strictly prohibited inside the campus. Periodic drill on disaster and risk reduction is also conducted. Because of the unwavering efforts of everyone, the building and other facilities are safe, well-maintained, and functional. Parameter C is concerned about the classrooms. The classroom size meets standard specification for instruction. Classrooms are well-lighted, ventilated, and acoustically conditioned adequately. These are also provided with enough chairs, furnitures, and supplies, and have permanent chalkboards or whiteboards. The classrooms are marked and arranged and free from interference. They are well-maintained and cleanliness and orderliness are evident that make them a space conducive for learning. Parameter D looks into the offices in the college. The administrative and academic offices are also accessible to stakeholders and are conveniently located in accordance to their function. There are enough offices and workspaces for all officials, faculty members, and the administrative staff. In addition, all offices are clean, well-lighted, and ventilated. Function rooms and lounge areas are available and accessible with storerooms that are strategically located. In relation, all offices are furnished with necessary equipment, furniture, supplies, and materials. Enough and clean toilets are properly installed for college personnel and students. There is also an internal and external communication system that facilitates communication between and among offices within the campus. All offices and staff rooms are adequate and are conducive for working. Assembly, athletic, and sports facilities are described and illustrated in parameter E. There are adequate function rooms for the conduct of meetings, conferences, convocations, and similar activities. Facilities for athletics, cultural activities, military trainings, and other related educational activities are accessible. In relation, all athletic sports and other curricular training equipment have storage facilities. The seating capacity of these spaces conforms to standard and there are adequate marked entry points and exit points. Indoor activities are constructed with appropriate flooring and are provided with proper lighting and ventilation, safety measures, toilets, functional drinking facilities, and adequate chairs. Outdoor facilities are constructed and are free from hazard. These facilities are provided with suitable surfaced floors and are appropriately laid out for a variety of activities. These spaces are also properly maintained and secured and are installed with a drainage system. The assembly, athletic sports, and cultural facilities are sufficient and varied to meet the requirements of the institution. Audiovisual rooms and facilities were constructed with appropriate equipment and are utilized in support of the teaching learning endeavors such as but not limited to video or overhead or slide projector, sound system, LCD projectors, and screens. In short, all indoor and outdoor facilities are well equipped and properly maintained. The medical and dental unit are featured in parameter F. 
Your college's medical and dental clinic is equipped with the basic facilities such as a reception area, a records area, an examination or treatment room, and toilets. Potable water is available and sufficient. Medical and dental equipment are provided. There is enough medical and dental supplies and materials. Storage facilities like a refrigerator and steel cabinets, among others, are available. In other words, the institution's medical and dental clinic is fully functional. Furthermore, adequate medical equipment and medicines like emergency medicines, AMBO bag, oxygen tank, intravenous fluid, spigmo manometer, thermometer, diagnostic set, stethoscope, treatment car, and nebulizer are available. Meanwhile, dental equipment and apparatuses like the dental chair, autoclave, medical supplies, filing instruments, and basic instruments, forceps, mouth mirror, cotton flyers, explorer, and others are available. The medical and dental clinic has also ample space, adequate lighting, and ventilation. The medical and dental clinics are managed by qualified medical and dental officers. The clinic is properly labeled and medical and dental services are regularly monitored and evaluated. The institution also has a canteen or cafeteria that is well-lighted, ventilated, screened, and provided with potable water supply. It is also provided with adequate cooking and preparatory equipment, serving stools and utensils, and dining tables and chairs. For its operation, the institution's canteen or cafeteria is managed by qualified and competent staff who undergo regular personal medical examinations. In relation, the institution also secured sanitary permits for the operation of the canteen while cleanliness and orderliness are strictly enforced. The food being served in the canteen is varied, nutritious, safe, and sold in an affordable price. Food services are prompt and well patronized. The school canteen generates income for the institution. The college has also an accreditation center. This office is accessible and is conveniently located in the administration building. It is provided with adequate equipment and fixtures like working tables and chairs, cabinets for display and filing, good ventilation and lighting, computer units. One of the good practices of the college is the maintenance of the accreditation center with provision of the required resources, furniture, and documents. Required documents or information and exhibits are updated, systematically packaged, and are readily available. The accreditation center is also well equipped and managed by qualified and committed personnel. Overall, the physical plant and facilities of the college are well maintained and regularly monitored to ensure that their roles and functions foster the provision of the quality education for MPSPC students. Welcome! You are now in Area 9. We will tour you around the different laboratories of MPSPC. First, we visit Room 207, the college's chemistry laboratory located at the second floor of the old academic building. The chemistry laboratory room has two doors that open outward for easy access in case of emergency. Our chemistry laboratory room is fully equipped with wide working stations, stools, appropriate lighting and ventilation. It is also installed with a LED TV, fire extinguisher, medicine kit, and safety signages. The furniture and equipment arrangements allow free flow of movement and enable students to work comfortably without interference. 
safety and precautionary measures are also well implemented to avoid unfortunate incidents or accidents in the laboratory. Properly labeled apparatuses, equipment, and glassware are found at the stockroom. During laboratory classes, students are required to wear their protective gear when they conduct chemistry experiments with the laboratory's equipment and apparatuses. Next, we will visit room 206, our biology laboratory room just next door. The biology laboratory room also has two doors opening outward for easy entry and exit. Inside the biology laboratory, we have multiple tables and stools as well as installed LED TV, fire extinguisher, medicine kit, and safety signages just like the previous room. Apart from being well ventilated, it also has good lighting that conform to standard requirements. Properly labeled apparatuses, equipment, and glassware can also be accessed from the stockroom. Microscopes, human skeletons, and body parts as well as various models and other diagrams are displayed at the biology laboratory room. Students who conduct their biology experiments here are also required to wear their laboratory gowns and personal protective equipment. Moving on, let us go up one floor to room 306 where the physics laboratory room is situated. We are now on the third floor of the same old academic building. These are the outward entrance and exit doors of the physics laboratory. Inside, there are many laboratory tables equipped with charging areas. The wide spaces in between the tables allow students to collaborate and move freely around the room. The physics laboratory room has a LED TV, fire extinguisher, medicine kit, and safety signages. Various physics apparatuses and equipment are properly labeled and found inside the cabinets. The physics laboratory room has a complete computer set for students' use in analyzing their experiments. Photos show students determining the heat of fusion of ice using calorimeter, digital balance, thermometer, and steering rod. In the physics laboratory, students excitedly work on their electricity and magnetism experiments using multiple testers and other measuring devices. Our next stop on the third floor is the Educational Technology Laboratory Room. Inside the Educational Technology Laboratory Room, multiple sets of computer units which have complete computer accessories are in place. Rules and laboratory policies are also well implemented. The EdTech Laboratory Room has a baggage counter, instructional materials, a printer, a LED TV screen, an air conditioner, and a whiteboard. Students can view the audiovisual and instructional materials and make use of the licensed software installed in the computer to enhance learning and instruction. Our last stop on the third floor are the computer laboratory rooms. You are now looking at the computer laboratory rooms. Students and instructors who use the laboratory room can move and settle in their seats easily with the spacious arrangements of the furniture and computers. Just like the Educational Technology Laboratory Room, these rooms are equipped with complete computer units with complete set of accessories, a baggage counter, whiteboard, projector, LED monitor screen, printers, Wi-Fi or routers, air conditioning unit, and licensed computer software and applications. Now, let us walk up to the fourth floor and visit the Speech Laboratory Room. The Speech Laboratory Room is found in the fourth floor of the old academic building. It has recently been renovated and updated. Its two doors, opening outwards, allow ease in entering and exiting from the laboratory. In this room, we can see complete computer sets placed in individual cubicles with the main control unit or faculty computer unit in front. The room has air conditioning and lights that foster an environment that is conducive for learning. A projector is placed for audiovisual learning purposes. 
students enhance their speech and presentation skills in this laboratory. We now exit through the back door as we will go up to the auditorium. This is the entrance to the auditorium. We are greeted with a spacious, well-ventilated, and naturally lighted area which can accommodate up to 800 people. When we look at the front, we see the elevated stage complete with a podium and a screen projection. The auditorium is completely equipped with various lightings, sound system with complete sets of functioning speakers, electric fans, chairs, projection screens, pulpit, maintenance equipment. Students and teachers conduct their physical education classes, orientations, conferences, and extracurricular activities in the auditorium. Let's go down one floor and go to the other building to visit the other natural science laboratories. We are now in the new and improved natural science laboratory rooms, rooms SB4A and SB4B. These rooms are intended to accommodate bigger classes with laboratory courses in the natural sciences. Multiple tables, stools, whiteboard, first aid kits, and water sources are installed. It is also well ventilated and equipped with appropriate lighting for wholesome laboratory learning experience. We are now headed to our final destination. Our last stop for this tour is the audiovisual room. It has two doors, opening outward for faster entry and exit. Oops! Before entering, please notice the friendly reminder posted outside the AVR. Upon entering, we can see installed theater seats and other equipment necessary for an audiovisual room. The audiovisual room is fully functional and it has an air conditioner, a podium, a TV, a whiteboard, and an Epson projector. Faculty and students conduct engaging lectures presentations, meetings, and seminars in this room. An operator stays inside the AVR cubicle to operate the sound system and to control presentations during conferences and meetings. That is all for Area 9. We hope you had a great experience touring around the laboratories of MPSPC.